Hello, my name is David Bruce. So imagine the musical world as being like a jungle, a rainforest, full of weird and wonderful creatures all carving out their own unique way of doing things. You've got some tiny orange poisonous frog over here. A flying squirrel over there. A long-tailed monkey. Wherever you look, there are new ideas, new ways of approaching things that you've never thought of. Looking into this musical jungle is constantly inspiring, constantly refreshing. It's like a mirror that reflects not who you are, but who you could be or who you might become. But then one day you notice that all the creatures in the jungle have started looking the same. They look a bit like you. So now when you look in that mirror, you just see the same old reflection every time. It becomes grey. Now you might feel that the world is rich with all sorts of different styles of music, that our forest is still full of life. But there's one particular area I want to look at where the biodiversity is rapidly shrinking and most of us haven't even noticed. And that area is tuning. <laughs> Most people these days tune to what's known as equal temperament. So in equal temperament, the octave is split into 12 divisions. So each of the notes are exactly the same distance from one another. This has become so commonplace that most of us barely stop to think about it. So I wanted to look at some of those exotic species that have lived successfully in our musical jungle for quite some time. Some of which have more than 12 divisions of the octave, some have less, some don't even have octaves. But as we'll see, some of these creatures are now under threat from the rise of equal temperament. Bear in mind that when you hear some of these, they may sound unusual and different to you. But if they sound weird, what you're really hearing is your own equal temperament conditioning. I had a really good insight into this when I was working with an Iranian musician who was fluent in both cultures. So he would travel back to Iran to play Iranian music and spend the rest of his time in the West, surrounded by equal tempered music. Now Iranian music, just like Arabic music, which we'll come to in a moment, has notes which, to those of us used to equal temperament, sound out of tune. And what this guy told me was that his ears took several days to acclimatise each time he moved between cultures. And I mean both ways. So when he was in the West and surrounded by equal temperament, then Iranian music did sound out of tune to him. But then after a few days back in Iran, the Western music sounded out of tune. It reminds me of how people who speak multiple languages often take a few days to switch their brains into the new language. So it's important to know that with each of these traditions, once you get used to them, none of them would sound out of tune. It's just your equal-tempered hearing that perceives it that way. So let's start with a rather beautiful exotic creature. This is the West African Kora. harp-like sound and in many ways its scale sounds familiar. Here it sounds very like Lydian mode with that sharp fourth. In this example by Fode Musa Suso, it sounds like a simple F major scale. But listen carefully, some of the notes are slightly different than we're used to. This is the Hardino tuning found in Kora music, and compared to the equal tempered scale, the second note of the scale is slightly low, and so is the sixth. So here's a standard F major scale, and here it is in the Hardino tuning. The difference between the two Gs is tiny. The distance between the F and the G changes from 200 cents in equal temperament to 185 in the Hardino tuning. But even though it's so small, it's hard to perceive, it's every bit as precise as the tuning of equal temperament. By the way, if you're interested in exploring different tunings, you might want to check out the latest version of the Dorico notation software, which includes the ability to set and play back any number of divisions of the octave, up to, I think, 7,000. In this case, all I had to do was look up the cents, as they're known, between each note of the Hardino tuning, and then set each letter of the scale here to that number. If you have more than seven notes, all you have to do is create a new accidental for that note, 
and then specify for that accidental how far away it is from the main note. I'm really impressed by how easy it is to explore and invent your own tunings with this, and I think it could be quite revolutionary for some of us. So there are several other chora tunings, each slightly different. The Sota scale is probably the most different from equal temperament. It has a flattened second and fifth, and a sharpened third, fourth and sixth. But as modern chora players have attempted to introduce the instrument, often playing alongside Western instruments, what's happened is the tuning has become more and more converted over to equal temperament. In many cases you could argue there's no alternative, but there's definitely a sense that the richness of the original tuning is becoming something of a cultural relic, less often heard in public. That said, it's good to see some traditional-minded players like Balake Sissoko reviving these old original tunings, like here the Tamora Masengo. My next example is certainly a thriving tradition, particularly through North Africa and the Middle East. There's perhaps one small example of how the influence of equal temperament has affected how the theory of the music has been perceived. But on the whole, this is still one of the kings of our musical rainforest. And for those of us used to equal temperament, it really does show how successful other approaches to tuning can be. I'm talking, of course, about Arabic music. Arabic music is based on the melody form called the makam, which is a bit like a scale, but with added traditions of ways of playing the notes within the scale. The three most common makamat are rast, sika, and bayati. You can see that some of the notes are different from the western tempered scale. And they're labelled here as half flat or as a quarter tone, as it's sometimes called, because it's half of a semitone. So you might think of that as halfway between the equal tempered tunings. But the phrase quarter tone is itself a misnomer. It's a shorthand that many people, including Arabic musicians themselves, use. And again, it's probably come about through the western attempt to delineate things. So even if it's not in our clean 12 divisions, the most it can be is 24 clean divisions, right? Thinking in these homogenized, equally spaced tunings doesn't fit very well with Arabic music, which is usually learnt by ear. The notes actually played in Arabic music are not easily systemized into any kind of structure. The E half flat occurring in the rast, for example, is tuned higher than the E half flat in the bayati. Indeed, the Arabic musician and scholar Sami Abu Shamais demonstrates in this podcast that he can articulate 12 different pitches, all of which he thinks of as some kind of E. Thanks to the magic of digital splicing, I took the E from 12 different maqam phrases and juxtaposed them next to each other so you could hear the differences. 12 different notes, each one slightly lower than the preceding one, all of which I and other musicians would refer to as some kind of E. And of course the flexibility of the tuning is not a consequence of Arabic musicians being less precise, it's rather the opposite. They're able to distinguish between slight variations in tuning that might go unnoticed in a Western context. And here you can already see how this brightens our grey outlook on our own music. We do tend to think of the notes of our equal tempered scale as being discrete and unchanging. We're used to thinking of notes of the piano keyboard which, once tuned, are fixed in place. But even in Western music, that's not the case. Any string player will tell you that there are different ways you'll play the same note. A leading note, for example, that's heading towards the tonic will usually be played slightly higher, or a third that is leading towards the fourth will be tuned higher than a third that's part of a stable tonic triad. What matters is the context. But let's push beyond our limited blinkered thinking even further. In the next system we'll look at, there is a system of tuning, but it doesn't even require that the same notes in the same group of players or even on the same instrument, are necessarily tuned to exactly the same pitch. This is a system of tuning which is so far removed from the concept of equal temperament that it's only fairly recently researchers have been able to start to get a sense of how the tuning is conceptualised. There are 
are two distinct cultures, one in Central Africa and one in the Indonesian country of Java. Nobody quite knows how, but these two cultures have an almost identical system of xylophone-based tuning, known as equipentatonic. There's also an equiheptatonic, so in these cases the octave is not split into 12 or 24, but 5 or 7 equal divisions of the octave. At least that's been the theory. So in the five-note scale, each note is more or less equidistant from the other, creating pitches unlike any of the ones we're used to. In Central Africa, the Central African Republic specifically, there are a large number of tribes that use the equipentatonic scale, but each operates with a slightly different system of tuning. And researchers have often tended to patronizingly assume that they just didn't really care about tuning. But since the 1980s, Frederick Voisin, Simha, Arom and others have been studying both the music of Central Africa and Java and have enlisted technology to try to gauge precisely what the local musicians themselves consider to be appropriately tuned scales. So they brought synthesizers and generated a whole range of different tunings and asked the locals to give feedback. What they eventually found was that there was indeed a rigorous system in place in which the highest priority was placed on the spacing between notes in an ascending line rather than on the precise relationship of the frequencies. And through systematic study of hundreds of trial recordings, the pair found that three distinct intervals were acceptable between neighbouring notes. Intervals of 200 cents, 240 and 280 cents. But the placement of those three intervals within the scale was crucial. So for example, the presence of a 280 cent interval at the high end of the scale was considered incorrect or out of tune. but switch these two intervals around, and now it's in tune. But within the various constraints they found, what's amazing is that different instruments within the same orchestra, or even different octaves on one instrument, could be tuned differently, so long as they obeyed the rules that they'd uncovered. So even the octave unison itself was unimportant. I found that quite amazing, it's such a huge difference in perception that it's quite hard for people accustomed to Western music to even conceive of that the octave itself wouldn't be important. And I think that really goes to show that we need to keep our minds open to the riches of the world and how many possibilities there are out there. One other thing I'll say straight away is that I've understood more clearly from looking into all this that the relationship between tuning and instrumentation is pretty crucial. Equal temperament really helps when you have a bunch of different types of instruments all playing together, especially when some of them are fixed on or not easily retuned. In the West, for example, you can match the changes of temperament over the years to the introduction of new instruments and ensembles, whether it's the pure-toned intonation of the earliest vocal music, through to the use of mean tone tuning with the addition of viol consorts, and then to the rise of equal temperament once strings, keyboards and voices were all starting to play together in the early Baroque. If you know of any other really interesting tuning systems, do let me know in the comments, I'd love to look into more of this. Thank you so much for watching, thanks as ever to my patrons over at Patreon. Do please like, subscribe and share with your friends, and I'll see you next time.